Hello Super Savers, Jennifer here again with Diamond Nesting. As requested, today's video is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to open an account at Treasury Direct for your existing trust and how to buy your first I-bond in that trust account. For those of you who don't have a trust yet and want to set one up yourself to buy another $10,000 of I-bonds like I did last month, and yes, I did buy even more via my brand new trust, that how to set up a trust video is coming next week. The hardest part was getting the trust documents notarized. So stay tuned. You can watch both videos together next week, or you can just keep watching this one for fun and experience. And this is truly the last proper way I found to add more I bonds to our personal portfolio. And as always, I hope it will help some of you I bond fans do the same as we push through this inflationary period together. If you're new to I-bonds, they're currently paying 9.62% on an annualized basis. That's the rate you'll get for the first six months if you buy them between May and October 2022. So if you're married or in a solid relationship with someone and you have a business and you have a trust, you could, for all practical purposes, buy at least $40,000 of I-bonds this year. $20,000 for you and your spouse that's $10,000 each, $10,000 for your business, and $10,000 for your trust. And if you and your spouse use the gifting strategy I figured out earlier this year, you could add at least another $20,000 of I-bonds to your joint portfolio, bringing you to a minimum purchase total of $60,000 in I-bonds for 2022. For those of you who want to learn more about this gifting strategy, Watch these two videos together before you go on a gifting frenzy. And if you have children, you can also buy $10,000 for each of them. Let's go to the Treasury Direct website. Click on open an account. On the next page, under individual personal, select Treasury Direct. What's going to pop up next is this page showing the three-step process for setting up an account. It's similar to opening an individual or personal account. In step one, I have to choose the type of account I'm opening. Step two will require me to input my personal and banking information. And step three is around setting up my password, password reminder, and security questions. Scroll down and click on apply now. Always use these buttons at the bottom to go back or move forward. And I've been kindly asked by folks to put this in all future Treasury Direct tutorials. Never use the back button in your browser. If you do, you'll either get this annoying sad face or this error processing your request page. Plus, you'll be logged out of your Treasury Direct account and lose any progress you've made. So use the buttons and tabs that Treasury Direct gives you to save yourself a bit of aggravation. So moving on to the next screen. I'm now asked the account type that I want to open. Scroll down to where it says entity account, select trust and click submit. You'll see that next to entity account, it says trust. And underneath that, the entity name, this is probably the trickiest part. If your trust is created by a trust agreement, Treasury Direct wants this entity name, this registration here to include both the trustee and the grantor. If there is more than one trustee and or one grantor, then the registration needs to include all the trustees and the grantors. If your trust is created by declaration of trust, they want only the trustees. I'll give two of the most common examples here. Example one, let's say Marcus and I have a joint trust where both of us are the trustees and grantors. And let's say that our trust document says trust agreement at the top. In this case, our entity name or registration, what goes in this box would read Marcus Lammer or Jennifer Lammer, trustees under agreement with Marcus Lammer and Jennifer Lammer, dated April 1st, 2022, where April 1st, 2022 is the date that the trust was created. And if I wanted to include the name of the joint trust in the registration, say it was called the Lammer Family Trust, then the entity name or registration would read Marcus Lammer or Jennifer Lammer, trustees, 
the Lammer Family Trust, you slash A, with Marcus Lammer and Jennifer Lammer, dated April 1st, 2022. Where you slash A stands for under agreement. U slash A is an approved Treasury Direct abbreviation for naming trusts. And the reason I showed this abbreviation is because this entity name or registration field is limited to 150 characters. So if your names are longer than others, you need to abbreviate some items. FS Publication 49 has a list of approved abbreviations as well as additional examples on how to fill out this entity name or registration field. And the Treasury Direct website has further instructions for opening an entity account. I've included links to both of these in the description below. All the details are in there, so do use them as resources if you have any questions about the entity name or registration field for your trust account with Treasury Direct. Also, take note of these Treasury Direct instructions. If the legal name of your trust, as shown in your trust document, shows more than one trustee and the names are joined by the connector and. Here's the example they give. John Doe and Sarah Jones, trustees under agreement with Jane Doe dated January 1st, 2001. You will need to send Treasury Direct all this additional information so that and connector in your trust document may cause some delays, especially since all the supporting documentation will need to be sent via snail mail to this address here. Now, let's go to example two. This is how I set up my own trust online, and I try to keep it as simple as possible. I am the sole trustee, and I am the grantor on my revocable living trust. And on the top of this trust document, it says declaration of trust instead of trust agreement, like in the previous example. In this case, the entity name or registration field would read Jennifer Lammer, trustee under declaration of trust, dated April 1st, 2022. Again, where April 1st, 2022 is the date that the trust was created. And as before, if I wanted to include the name of my trust, which is called the Jennifer Lammer Revocable Living Trust, the entity or registration name would then read Jennifer Lammer, trustee, Jennifer Lammer Revocable Living Trust, U slash D slash T dated April 1st, 2022, where U slash D slash T is the approved abbreviation for under declaration of trust. And this is how the entity name or registration on my trust account with Treasury Direct actually reads. Once I enter my entity name or registration, I'll give my account a name. I just named mine Jen's Trust. Now I'll enter the trust tax ID number. I'm going to use my social security number and the first four characters of my last name because my revocable living trust, as typical of most revocable living trusts, uses the grantor's social security number as the tax ID. And yes, according to Treasury Direct, it's okay to have a trust account attached to your social security number as well as an individual account attached to that same social security number. The reason is because the trust account is a different type of account than an individual account. A trust account is an entity account. If you have an irrevocable trust, you would typically enter the trust tax ID here instead of using your social security number because irrevocable trusts generally have a separate tax identification number. Down here, where it says entity address, I'll enter my address. Under account manager information, I'll enter my own details. And under account manager contact information, I'll enter my address again, my cell phone details. And below that, my email and mailing address. The mailing address can be either my entity address or my account manager address. In this case, it doesn't matter since they're both the same. Then I'll enter the bank account information for the trust. I used my personal bank account, the same one that I used for my individual Treasury Direct account, but if your trust has its own bank account, you can use that instead. Now I'll read through this taxpayer identification number certification here, and then check this little box here to agree to all the details. Then I'll click submit. 
On the next page, I'll make sure that all the information I entered is correct and read through this section. If I need to change anything, I'll click edit to go back. Everything is good to go though, so I'll click submit. Now I'll choose a personalized image and a caption and click submit. Then I'll choose a password, password reminder, and three security questions with corresponding answers and click submit. And voila, I've opened my trust account with Treasury Direct and hopefully so have you. So go ahead and check your email now to see what your new account number is. For those of you who've already purchased iBonds via your individual account, buying an iBond via your newly opened trust account is pretty much the same. So I'm going to log into my newly set up trust account now from the main Treasury Direct website. I'll click on login, then I'll enter the account number for my trust that I've pulled from my email and click submit. What will appear next is this one-time passcode page because I'm logging in for the first time into my trust account. I'll grab this one-time passcode from my email, the same one that they sent my account number to. Then I'll enter it here and click this little box to register my computer because I don't want to have to do this every time. I'll check that my image and caption are correct and then enter my password via this virtual keyboard and click submit. What will appear now is my account summary page. I'm going to click on buy direct up here. And on the next page, I'll go down to savings bonds and select series I for I bonds, then click submit. Now, all I need to do is figure out how much I want to buy. The minimum is $25 and the maximum is $10,000 and double check that the bank information is correct. Below that, I can choose to buy my I bond as a single purchase on a specific date as regularly scheduled purchases for example, weekly or monthly, or even on a specific set of dates. I opted for a single purchase for my newly opened trust and then clicked submit. And here's the purchase review page I got afterwards. I'm going to check everything for accuracy. If anything is wrong, I'll click edit to go back and make changes. If everything is correct, which it is, I'll hit submit. And here you have it, Ibon fans. Here's the confirmation page that I just bought $10,000 of Ibon's for my trust. And yes, we did make it just in time to grab the 7.12% annualized rate from the last IBON rate cycle. All right, my financial friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And for those of you without a trust, next week I'll walk you through how I set up my revocable living trust online for these IBONs. As I mentioned earlier, it's not too hard to do. See you again soon with another money-saving wealth-building video.